first and second fastest North Americans of all time in the 5K. And we're just like getting it. started. Canadian like flag it. picture of Mo Ahmed mm -hmm. and Justin Knight. Two Canadians. And they are the fastest 5K runners in the history of North America. And apparently, and for those who don't know, the United States is part of North America. So definitely a little jab at uh, us Americans this, being outrun this, this by was your take Canadians. Away? This was your takeaway? Take yeah. Jakob Ingerbritsen runs 1248, and your takeaway nah. is that Canada has a better 5K performance than the United States. No. Yes, Stop that all that. Let's that talk about Ahmed was amazing. Didn't didn't get a PB only because his PB was so ridiculously fast. Justin Knight came on this podcast, said, My goal is to run a sub 13 in 2021. He's a little reluctant to tell me what the goal was. And then if if you watch that that clip that we've posted, he says, Ah, whatever. Sub 13. Smashes 13. I mean, just absolutely yes. crushes 13. Runs 12.51 here. But Inga Britson got the win. Inga Britson and Gebowet both break 12.50. Shep a guy, world record holder, showed some vulnerability here, Gordon. He took the lead after the pacer stepped off and was, was clicking off some laps there, but just did not have it over the final portion of this race. And it set up perfectly for not only Inga Britson to win, but obviously Inga Britson to run fast because it narrowed down the field. And then with his 1500 meter speed, you had to like him to emerge from that group in the last hundred breaks the European record with that mark. Gebrowet close behind. It's going to set up a very interesting decision for Ingebrigtsen at the Olympics. Does he do both? Does he do just the 15? Does he do just the five? The double is technically doable, but it's going to be very challenging. He did both in Doha, but obviously, obviously a good decision I, uh, that he's being forced to make here. I think he's got to do the five. I think this performance, seeing what Sheptegai does in this type of environment is definitely a positive for him. He's like, okay, the world record holder can't handle this style of racing without the lights and the pacing and perfect, everything around you perfect. He knows he's going to have the best kick of anyone in this field because Chariot's not there. And I think, I think his, I think, he needs Chariot to have a bad race for him to win the 1500. He doesn't need anyone to have a bad race in the 5K for him to win the 5K. He just needs to have his own good race and he'll win. I don't quibble with anything you've said in terms of Chariot's dominance, but let's not overreact to one Chepta guy bad race. By the way, bad race is 1254 because he's won championship <laughs> races before. He won the yeah. 10,000 in Doha. Now he ran it in a fast time. When I was watching Sheptegai run this race and he took over the lead when the pacer stepped off, I thought, okay, he's trying to simulate what he's going to do in the Olympics. That's what I thought, where he wants to have that longer push from home. And it didn't work out this time, but that doesn't mean he's not going to be able to make it happen in Tokyo in a couple months. But if you want to beat Jacob Ingebrigtsen in a 5,000, you do not want to have him near you with 100 to go in 2021. That might have worked in 2019 at the World Championships, but in 2021, he just has too good of a kick. You cannot have him near you in the last 100 and, and expect to prevail even off of a pace that quickly. But like I said, this thing just got set up perfectly for him. And you know, since we are talking about this after the NCAA Championships, you know what this race reminded me of? It reminded me of the 10K the, the night before where Kip2 was chapter guy. Right, the guy. Yeah. Everybody is everybody's keying off of the alpha in the race, and then they clearly don't have it. Drift back, and then obviously Chepta guy or Inga Britson is not a, a shock winner in the same way that Patrick Deaver might have been. But you have everybody's race plan kind of get a bit scrambled because you're expecting Chepta guy just to grind this thing out and get the win, and it doesn't happen, and it was left to to the fastest closer. But yeah, bunch of PRs all around in that men's 5,000. It was a fun one to watch for sure. Lived up to the hype without that many people. Sometimes it's diminishing returns. You throw another amazing athlete in there and they sometimes spend a lot of time looking at each other, but this one was was fabulous. I think this race kind of signifies the change of what it means to be elite in international 5,000 meter running. 
I think mm -hmm. five years ago, you broke 13, you were considered elite. I mm -hmm. think now you need to break 1250 to be considered elite. I think there's just that, there's gonna be that change where like, I mean, some people will say it's the shoes or whatever, but I just think there's gonna be a more, I remember, was it two or three years ago, there was like a whole thing about like, why aren't 5,000 meter men breaking 13 minutes? Right? That was a thing, Lincoln right? Wrote, Lincoln wrote an article. Lincoln just started back at Flow, wrote that article, and then two weeks later, maybe, there was the Brussels Diamond League where everybody went nuts. Kajelka, Borrega, yeah. Gebrowet, and they smashed it. But you're right. Yes, there was a season where people were not cracking 13. And I think now, in order to like officially become like, hey, I am a top eight in the world, you need to be a sub-1250 guy. Yeah. Bef yeah. Five years ago, you need to be a sub-13 guy to be a top eight person. But the, just yeah. things have changed. I 100% agree with that. And for the United States, that means everybody's going to have to up their game. Obviously, the U.S. has had some quick performances over the last couple of years in the 5K. Uh, but this is the expectation at this point. This is what it's going to take to medal. It's, and especially with those times we just saw the Ethiopian trials, men's and women's in Hengelo, if people didn't see those, that was the same meet where Latensa Bet Gade breaks Sifan Hassan's record that was only a couple of days old. So, you know, the, the quality of performance is just, is just ratcheting up in these distance races.